All right, guys, how's it going? Uh, I figured that I'd go ahead and show you guys how I get my cash and my XP. I'll go ahead and show you the setup. So basically, I use my Brutuses. You can use, yeah, I use well, both my Brutuses, really. There's more poles I can use, but those are the main poles I use to do this. The 10 foot 10 and the 11 foot 10 with 25 pound fluoro. I use a number 10 catfish hook. Um, you can use large minnows. I like to use shiners. I can I usually keep it at about a 24 inch lead. Uh, what we want is we want to have a titanium leader so that they don't cut the line, bite the line off. And I think that's about all we really need to know. So let's go ahead and hop over to St. Croix, St. Croix Lake. Now, when I first heard about this spot, I was under the impression that it was kind of like a glitch spot. But I really don't know if it is or not. I don't, I don't personally think it is. I think that people just got the wrong impression about it. Nonetheless, let's let's go over here and check it out. All right, so we're going to hop over to Woods of the Eastern Bank. And you just turn around and you run for your life. Now as you can see it says I've got a barbless hook. You don't necessarily have to have barbless. Uh, I think barbless is supposed to help you stay out of the weeds. Like get caught up in the weeds. Uh, you're pretty much fishing through the weeds though so if you're not reeling in a fish you're probably going to be reeling in some sort of weeds I wouldn't worry too much about it as long as you've got a strong enough pull and strong enough line uh, it's not going to matter too much as you can see we've already got a couple people over here um, this is actually one of the more common spots for people to be fishing and actually I feel like I went too far yep it's right here okay so there's actually like a little corner you can get yourself dipped into like you can see I stopped there and I'm running along the wall you don't have to be exactly in this corner but I think it helps <laughs> anyway uh, there's kind of this little bit of a gap here I want to say in between the reeds or the brush or whatever you want to call it and I like to just cast out about 60 feet well I'd, I'd say between 48 and honestly between 48 and 58 is about what I like to be at for this spot not exactly especially with the uh titanium 
thing that we put on we want to be a little one at least one notch down on the drag more than normal because it adds a little bit extra um, weight to the line but you can sit here and fish for these all day from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at night they come fairly uh, fairly often there's sometimes that it seems like it takes a while to get a catch and there is every once in a while you'll get caught up you'll get snagged on something you kinda wanna pay a little bit of attention to that but yeah this is where I like to fish I can just pay attention to whatever else I wanna do I don't have to pay attention to the game I just I got the the dings going so you can hear when there's a fish close by and you got the rumble on the controller so you can feel it vibrate when there's fish actually biting and you know you can tell when your bobber is just going crazy the vibration is going crazy that's when you it's time to hook and sink and start reeling in so this has been my most common spot to fish um, I'm not great with knowing where to fish or when to fish uh, you can catch uniques here it's basically you catch a lot of trophies this is a good spot for catching trophy pike if you fish further out past like 60 or 70 you actually catch something else I forgot what it was but I don't like to fish that far out I like to just focus on the pikes um, but yeah we'll catch at least one maybe we'll catch a few I haven't really caught anything other than pike here too which is nice pike are worth a decent amount of money get about 1500 for trophies if it's not a trophy you're probably getting a little less than a thousand which isn't bad I mean it costs two thousand a day to fish here I'm not even sure what the license costs at this point because I'm trying to buy my advanced licenses with coins as much as possible so I don't have to worry about paying for the license every time I come here yeah you can see that shiner just moving about out there trying to avoid getting eaten I think the most frequent times to catch uh, uniques is while it's sunny out there's pretty much not really cloudy I think you might be able to catch them when it's cloudy but it's not very often it's pretty I mean it's not very often to catch uniques in general I think the most common time to catch uniques is when it's sunny out there's no clouds uh, it's between about 12 or 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. I think is kind of the peak times to catch them and I mean there's just a little bit of luck in, involved I mean I see people if you really know what you're doing there's like three or four different spots here you can run around catching uniques all day I've seen people with like six to ten unique catches in the same day on the game and I'm just tripping out by that but yeah this is this is the spot where I usually like to fish of course we got the uh, St. Patrick's Day event going on right now look at that there's one right there looks like we can up the drag a little bit so yeah like I was saying we got the St. Patrick's Day event going on right now so I've been focusing on catching a uh, leprechaun fish and rowdy bass for bait coins because that's that's the hard currency to get a hold of 
I mean, you, they pretty much want you to pay for them. Damn. This one got pretty far out there, too. I wonder how big this guy is. Might be a 20 plus pounder. He's putting up a little bit of a fight, it looks like. I don't think it's unique, but usually uniques will take you pretty far out. It seems like it's probably too early for a unique anyway. You don't usually find uniques at 5.30 in the morning. Where's this guy going? Usually I don't even turn my screen, really. I just... I just stay focused on where I'm casting out. I reel them in. But like I said, I'm I'm usually paying attention to other things. It is kind of fun to really get into it like you're actually fishing, chasing the fish down like I am right now. Like, come here you little sucker. That's a big fish right there. I got me a humdinger. I'm going to reel it in. I'm gonna put it in my Betty Crockett. Come on. Going right in the crock pot. Get over here. Oh, there it is. Let's see what we got here. 21 pounds, not bad. And like you'll see, uh, you see my experience where it says I got 501 experience gain. There's like those three green bars. Uh, that's kind of based off of your gear and how big the fish is that you catch. Because usually most trophies, uh, you'll get those green arrows, which is good. You want the green arrows. You get more XP when you get green arrows. Kind of based off your tackle, like I was saying. Your gear, fishing pool, everything included, really. Uh, you'll notice if I end up catching one that's not a trophy. Most likely it'll be red arrows going down, and that's just you know the fish was underneath uh your gear basically and it you don't get as much experience for it but i mean hell you saw i think i got like 1400 1500 dollars for that i don't i didn't actually pay too much attention to how much it gave me but yeah like i said i fish here from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. It doesn't seem like you really... You can catch them at night, but it's very less frequent. It's You don't really catch very many at all. You'd be lucky to catch like three fish at night, honestly, doing this one. Actually, I think it's best to catch the... Uh, well, the blue catfish at night, which they're quite a bit bigger. I think they're worth a lot more experience, but they're not worth as much cash. And uh, I don't know, if you watch some of my other videos, we kind of end up going through cash during these events. So, and plus, there's a lot of cash that you need just to fucking buy the upgraded gear from gaining levels. I mean, I think the fastest uh, boat that we want to buy when we're level 50 is like 300. And 50 grand so there's quite a bit of money that you need on this game I could definitely see myself going through a million dollars still and I'm what level 43 yeah 43 and that guy's level 55 like prestige 143 damn we'll catch one more really quick before I end this video I think
Yeah, like I said, you just number 10 catfish hook, about 24 on the leader length. Make sure you have one of those uh, titanium titanium leaders, I believe is what it was. I'm going to take a look at it after this, actually. If you really want to have some fun, you want to come over here in a boat, have the fish drag you across the water. Sometimes it's fun to have a little bit underpowered fishing pole to do it with. These fish will take you on a ride all fucking day. This fish is not sure where it wants to go. Come on. He's fighting it. This might be another 20 pounder. Ooh, just a little under. All right. Once again, we'll look at the gear. Yeah, titanium leader, that's what it's called. You wanna make sure to have that or else some of these fish will bite the line off. I was having issues with that recently. It really pissed me off. It doesn't really matter on the uh, bobber. Just whatever. Well, I think that you want to have at least a chubby bobber. You don't want to have, like, a sports bobber or something like that. That's not really going to do it. Um, I think f having fluoro line is important. Because I think the fluoro line is more invisible to the fish. Uh, from what I've heard, you kind of happen to catch fish more often with floral line at least these guys I believe I'm not the greatest fisherman I don't really know much about catching the different kinds of fish I pretty much ask around in the lobbies and until I find someone nice enough to actually tell me <laughs> like I said I feel like they catch uh, better with shiners you can use large minnows And then you want to have about, oh, I have 43 on this leader. The leader length is 43 on this pole, and it's 24 on my other pole. 43. Where's my other pole? 43. I have 43 on both of these? Well, I guess it's 43 then. It doesn't really matter though, you can have it in the 20s. Um, yeah, the kid, number 10 catfish hook is one of the most important things also. And then just having the pole and the reel to actually sustain all those things. One thing I've learned is it's best to have, like, you want your pole to be the strongest thing. Like, you see my pole is uh, 11 to 34 pound. Uh, my reel is 29 and a half, so it's my second strongest thing. So it's going to go down in durability slower than my pole is. And then my uh, line is 25 pound line. So it's underneath my reel. Oh, it's actually the max drag is what you want to look at for the reel. It's 26 and a half. 
and then the uh, line like I was saying is 25 so you want to have the line is the weakest thing the pull is the strongest thing preferably the reel in between it doesn't really matter too much where the reel is at as long as the line is the uh, thing taking the most amount of damage because it's more expensive to repair your pole than it is to buy a new line or to repair your reel like I was saying I think the barbless hook helps with uh, staying keeping from getting caught in the weeds and stuff it doesn't necessarily help here because like I was saying we're pretty much fishing in the middle of the weeds let's go ahead and catch one more also like I was saying you want to kind of stay in, in between the 48 and 58 foot range And you can see on my screen I've got the three bars showing what's actually taken the most damage with it, whether it's my line, my reel, or my rod. Um, I like to look at that rather than the one main bar just so that I can keep track of what's actually taken the most amount of damage. I usually try to keep uh, the ring underneath where it shows the uh, the line and the the rod and the reel that circle underneath and where it's got a two two shaded bars and then it's got uh six like filled in bars that's your fucking that's your drag and i like to keep my drag just below kind of red barring my uh my line bar because if, if you max out the line bar, you can actually break your line, and you don't want to do that. Of course, this is stuff that you probably already know if you're fishing at St. Croix Lake. Like, this is a high, higher level area to fish at. And I might go into more detail on this stuff in another video. I might make like a beginner guide to Fishing Planet. because they don't really give you any details they just like give you about 10 grand to start with they're like here you go good luck <laughs> and you gotta do a lot of learning for yourself Yeah, but like I was saying, I feel like this is a good game to play if you like fishing and you're just trying to basically pass the time. It doesn't help a lot. Like I like I like to do stuff while I'm playing this, so it doesn't help a lot if uh, you're using lures and you're just constantly reeling in, doing different uh, retrieves. It's kind of why I like this spot so much because you can just set it and forget it until a fish actually bites. Bobber fishing is the way to go on here if you ask me. Although I, I did have to do 
quite a bit of lure fishing to actually get to this point. I usually like to start off on an account at the first lake until I get to like level 15 or so and then I usually go to Emerald Lake until I'm about level 34 which is where I do the lure fishing at so there's there's quite a bit of lure fishing involved to get here at least the way I do it or it end up taking way too long it takes long enough as it is but I don't know I'm sure there's better strategies out there to level up faster it's just the thing I found to be the most helpful to me another 19 pounder that one was pretty easy to reel in too see that's almost 1500 bucks so you get some decent money uh, playing here I get probably between 40 and 60 grand a day off of this place but anyway thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed feel free to leave some tips or some comments uh, in the comments below <laughs> and I'll catch you guys on the next one peace out and good luck